Well, first of all, thank you very much for uh, talking to us today. Really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Let me start off by asking you a, a, a simple question. So what are quantum dots? So a quantum dot is a small nanometer-sized particle of a semiconductor. And it's uh, small enough that when you put an electron in there, instead of behaving like a particle, yet like it would have in a wire, it behaves quantum mechanically. Uh, it fills the box with a wave. And as a result, the properties of those electrons are strongly size dependent on the size of the box that you put that wave in. And it's, um, it's those properties that end up being really interesting, uh, fundamentally, um, and really interesting from an application perspective as well. So how did you get into this field in the first place? Well, it, you know, it was a, um, kind of an accidental uh, process, as many of these things are, right? So I was uh, initially a uh, theoretical polymer physicist or polymer chemist. Uh, then I became a high resolution spectroscopist in the infrared, looking at very small molecules in the gas phase of interstellar um, applications or interests when I was a graduate student. And then I had a, a fellowship from AT&T Bell Laboratories that allowed me to spend the summer at Bell Labs. Uh, Bell Labs was still around then. It was 1980, 1987. <clears throat> so I went there and I discovered the world of condensed matter physics and solid state chemistry, um, which just opened my eyes to all of this incredible science and applications that was going on in electronics and optics that I had really no idea about. Um, and I, my uh, summer was with Lewis Bruce, a co-laureate, who had been basically working on quantum dots for about five years then. He had discovered the initial uh, process, the quantum mechanical explanation of why these little particles behave the way that they do. And I just fell in love with it. Also, um, so then I came back to do a postdoc with Lewis. Uh, and uh, you know, what I really liked about that field was that it was brand new. So any question that you asked was a new question. There were no answers, there were just questions. Uh, so building a field from scratch was just incredible. Tell us a bit about your uh, major breakthrough in 1993. So um, when I came to uh, MIT in 1990, uh, I had uh, brought with me the beginnings of a way to make quantum dots that seemed to make much better dots than we had been making that Lewis and his previous co-workers had been making. But the um, problem was that it didn't happen all the time. You know, it's, a, it's one of these chemistry things that uh, you don't know why it doesn't work, but uh, so at Bell Labs, it, it happened occasionally that I would make these beautiful samples. And at MIT, it happened never, which was really problematic because my career hinged on make, me making samples. Um, so we had to reinvent uh, the way that we made um, our samples, you know, based on insight that had gotten from being a postdoc at Bell Labs. So we developed a, a completely air-free, water-free uh, synthesis based on old ideas of nucleation and growth, in, in, uh, basically introducing uh, precursor reagents very quickly into a very hot solution to get uh, a seeding, uh, nucleation of very, very tiny little particles. Um, followed by a longer growth step, which allowed us to control the size of the particle with exquisite, um, uh, uh, ex ex exquisite um, precision. Uh, and then we followed that with, um, with a, uh, what we call size selective precipitation, which is basically purification, which what, this is what chemists do when they create something new, a new molecule, you purify to extract it. And so that combination um, took us about two and a half years from the time I arrived at MIT. And I uh, wrote a paper with my two, first, two of my first students on that, Chris Murray and David Norris. Um, and that uh, synthesis is what allowed us to be able to really study the physics of the materials and open up uh, the field to a lot of other groups that became very interested in physics and developing further the chemistry and eventually, not so long after that, in 1998, was the first uh, startup based on quantum dots, the commercialization of the material. Let me, let me pick up on that. So, so, so what's happened since then, and, and what use are made of quantum dots today? So since then, the field has grown exponentially. There are groups all over the world um, uh, studying all aspects of quantum dots. The materials have exploded. 
Initially, we worked on one material, cadmium selenide, one semiconductor. Today, there's you know, a lot of different materials. Also, little particles or nanoparticles that are not semiconductors that are grown in similar ways, like magnetic particles, semi-metals. So the fundamental science, the physics, and the chemistry has really grown tremendously, building what I would, what people call, you know, a new uh, periodic table of artificial atoms, artificial functional nanomaterials that you can put together to create uh, new properties. Uh, that's on the that's on the fundamental science part. On the commercial part. Um, the big application that almost everybody probably has heard of is um, displays. Um, the, uh, the acronym QLED that Samsung uh, has uh, brought out, the Q stands for quantum dot. So it's the quantum dot that provides the green and red light in these, uh, in these, in these displays. That's fascinating. <laughs> That, now, the question I'm going to ask you now, you've been asked a hundred times, I'm sure, but, but what went through your mind? How did you feel when you heard, first heard that you'd won the Nobel Prize? Well, uh, I heard from a phone call at 5.45 in the morning, and the first, you know, when you hear the phone ring at 5.45, you think something terrible has happened. And so my wife woke up suddenly and said, what's wrong? What happened? <laughs> and so I told her, it's from Stockholm, and then she knew immediately what I was talking about. <laughs> So, so amidst all this, what's next for you and, and, and what's next for Quantum Dots? Uh, for me, um, I'm very much interested in um, the quantum optics application, the potential quantum optics application of Quantum Dots. And since uh, it's going to be the year of quantum, you know, this is right in line with my interests, <laughs> so it's very apropos. Um, I'm interested in pursuing, uh, you know, some other potential applications also. Um, and, uh, and then I'm interested in reaching out to, uh, to young scientists. And, um, you know, getting the Nobel Prize comes with a lot of joy, but I also feel it comes with some responsibility of uh, telling your story. And, uh, you know, the path that we all take in science is one of, often one of frustration, and, but with amazing delight when something happens and pursuing those delightful paths and keeping the faith and really following your interests, I think is something that's really important uh, to, 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 to share with you know, young scientists because our future depends on them. So let me follow up, just two quick questions to follow up with that. So, so when you come to a place like this, you know, there are thousands of people here and they're from all over the world. There's a lot of young, a lot of young people here. There are a lot of young people listening to you talk yesterday in the uh, auditorium. Kind of, they all want to be like you, so what's your message to them? Well, my message is, you know, don't count on the Nobel Prize first. <laughs> it's not what you strive for. You know, what you strive for is, you know, to, to um, feed your curiosity and to have faith in what you think is interesting um, is going to be really interesting. You know, keep that faith because um, I think it's uh, often a mistake if you're young to think that the only worthwhile directions are the ones that are well established, that have a big community and, you know, that are fairly mature. But there's a lot of stuff out there at the edges that who knows what they're going to turn into, and those are going to be the next breakthroughs, the next Nobel Prizes. Uh, those are worth thinking about. Now, my final question is, uh, everyone's talking about uh, next year being the 125th uh, anniversary, the, the year of uh, quantum. So, uh, and I think the UN is recognizing this. So what do you hope that's going to achieve? Um, well, I hope it's going to uh, achieve a realization that quantum is around us today everywhere not just in displays that use quantum dots but you know almost everything that we use as a technology in some ways um, has as a foundation the discovery of quantum mechanics 125 years ago it's just such an important breakthrough in our path towards technologies it's ubiquitous uh, but there's still a lot of things that we could do in, in, in quantum that will may be amazing in the future. So the next uh, you know, 10 to 20 years may see more amazing thing relative to uh, quantum information, you know, quantum optics, you know, things that really use quantum in ways that uh, we haven't thought about uh, before. 
So I'm very much looking forward to the next 10 to 20 years. Well, thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you, so thank you very much. My pleasure.